And you can see a live picture now from the United Nations Security Council. They're meeting this morning in New York, a meeting requested by the U.S., Great Britain, France, Japan, and South Korea in response to North Korea's latest nuclear test. According to reports, South Korea believes the North is preparing more missile launches, including an intercontinental ballistic missile. The estimated test Sunday was five times larger than North Korea's previous tests. President Trump said, we'll see, when asked whether the U.S. will attack North Korea. He also said the U.S. is considering stopping all trade with any country that does business with North Korea. So once again, you're watching a live picture from New York City, the United Nations Security Council, a uh, emergency meeting called by the U.S., Great Britain, France, Japan, and South Korea in response to North Korea's latest nuclear test. We saw the U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley a couple of minutes ago, and we're waiting now for this meeting to get underway. Live coverage this morning here on C-SPAN. <laughs>
The 8,039th meeting of the Security Council is called to order. As this is the first public meeting of the Council for the month of September, I should like to take this opportunity to pay tribute on behalf of the Council to His Excellency Ambassador Amr Abdullata, permanent representative of Egypt, for his service as President of the Council for the month of August. I'm sure I speak for all members of the Council in expressing deep appreciation to Ambassador Abdullata and his delegation for the great diplomatic skill with which they conducted the Council's business last month. The provisional agenda for this meeting is non-proliferation, Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite the representative of the Republic of Korea to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. In accordance with Rule 39 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite Mr. Jeffrey Feldman, Under Secretary General for Political Affairs, to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. I now give the floor to Mr. Jeffrey Feldman. Mr. President, members of the Security Council, in a statement by its official news agency on 3 December 2017, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the DPRK, announced that it had successfully conducted a sixth nuclear explosive test. The DPRK characterized the event as, quote, perfect success in the test of a hydrogen bomb for intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, end quote. The DPRK further said that it also, quote, 
marked a very significant occasion in attaining the final goal of completing the state nuclear force, end quote. The Executive Secretary of the Preparatory Commission for the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, CTBTO, in Vienna, said in the statement that the organization's monitoring stations had picked up an unusual seismic event in the area of the site used in the DPRK for its previous nuclear tests. The CTBTO's um, data indicated that the event measured approximately 6.0 in magnitude. Governmental sources from UN member states measured a yield as high as 6.3. In any case, it is evident uh, the yield of the device was larger than any of the DPRK's previous nuclear tests. Experts have estimated a yield of between 50 and 100 kilotons, or on average, more than five times more powerful than the weapon detonated over Hiroshima and at the low end of the yield of a modern thermonuclear weapon. The CTBTO detected a second smaller seismic event at the location of the DPRK test site eight and a half minutes after the main event. The CTBTO has not yet completed its analysis of the second event, but experts have speculated that it could have been caused by the collapse of the tunnel used in the nuclear test. Mr. President, in, a state, in an earlier statement the same day, the DPRK official media reported that their leader had inspected what they claimed to be a hydrogen bomb, which was conspicuously displayed in front of a payload fairing for a Hwansung-14 intercontinental ballistic missile. The DPRK article stated that the hydrogen bomb was, quote, a multifunctional thermonuclear nuke with great destructive power, which can be detonated at even high altitudes for super powerful EMP attack, end quote. This was a rare reference by the DPRK to the use of EMP, an electromagnetic pulse, which triggered by a nuclear weapon would aim for widespread damage and disruption to electricity grids and sensitive electronics, including on satellites. Mr. President, this is the second Emergency Security Council meeting on nonproliferation, the DPRK, in less than a week, and the tenth time the Security Council has met to discuss the DPRK this year. On 31 August, the DPRK Foreign Ministry issued a statement to reject the Security Council's recent presidential statement and said that the ballistic missile launch of 29 August was the, quote, first step taken by the Korean People's Army in its Pacific operation and a meaningful prelude to restraining Guam, end quote. Their reports today indicate that the DBRK may be preparing new ballistic missile tests. Mr. President, we are alarmed by this dangerous prov provocation. The Secretary General condemns the underground nuclear test announced by the DPRK. This act is yet another serious breach of the DPRK's international obligations and undermines international nonproliferation and disarmament efforts. This act is also profoundly destabilizing for regional and international security. The DPRK is the only country that continues to break the norm against nuclear test explosions. The Secretary General reiterates his call on the DPRK leadership to cease such acts and to comply fully with its international obligations under relevant Security Council resolutions. Mr. President, the Security Secretary General counts on the Security Council to remain united and take appropriate action. As was said in the Security Council meeting last week, as tensions rise, so does the risk of misunderstanding, miscalculation, and escalation. The latest serious developments require a comprehensive response in order to break the cycle of provocations from the DPRK. Such a response must include wise and bold diplomacy to be effective. As the Council considers its reaction, the Secretary General reiterates the importance of responding to humanitarian imperatives regardless of the political situation. The people of the DPRK rely on the international community to provide humanitarian assistance to those in need. We will continue to follow the developments and remain in close coordination with the concerned international organizations, members of the Council, and other governments concerned. Thank you. I thank Mr. Feldman for his briefing. I now give the floor to those Council members who wish to make statements. 
I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. And we want to thank you for um, allowing us to have this prompt meeting as it's very urgent. And we also want to thank the ambassador of Egypt and his team for the steady hand and the calm way in which he led in this past month. For more than 20 years, the Security Council has taken actions against North Korea's nuclear program. And for more than 20 years, North Korea has defied our collective voice. It's worth taking a few moments to recount some of the history. In 1993, the Council approved Resolution 825, calling on North Korea to remain in the Non-Proliferation Treaty. That didn't work. North Korea withdrew from the treaty and continued its nuclear pursuit. In 2006, the six-party talks faltered, and North Korea conducted several ballistic missile launches. That led to Resolution 1695, condemning them. The same year, North Korea conducted its first nuclear test. That led to Resolution 1718, establishing a UN sanctions regime aiming to stop all nuclear, ballistic missile, and other weapons of mass destruction programs. After six-party talks fell apart again in 2009, North Korea conducted additional missile launches and its second nuclear test. That led to Resolution 1874, which expanded sanctions, including an arms embargo and cargo inspection obligations. In 2012, the Leap Day deal failed, and North Korea conducted two new space launches. The Security Council responded with the adoption of Resolution 2087. Following North Korea's third nuclear test in 2013, the Council adopted Resolution 2094, expanding sanctions to restrict financial, maritime, aviation, and diplomatic activities. By 2016, North Korea had conducted its fourth nuclear test and another space launch. They followed that with more missile launches. In response, the Council adopted multiple resolutions expanding sanctions even further, targeting whole sectors of North Korea's economy. Finally, this year, the Council got even more serious. First, we adopted Resolution 2356, designating high-ranking North Korean government officials and the military strategic rocket forces command for individual sanctions. Then, just last month, after the regime's first two ICBM launches, we adopted Resolution 2371, the strongest sanctions we have ever imposed on North Korea. That resolution banned North Korean exports of coal, iron, and seafood, and imposed several other measures that will significantly cut off the revenues needed to fund their nuclear program. Why did I take the time to go through this history? to make this point. The United Nations Security Council has spoken with unusual unity and consistency on North Korea. That's a good thing. Along the way, there have been problems with implementation, and the Council has at times been too slow and too weak. But this is not a situation in which we have allowed divisions among us to stop any action. Still, here we are. Despite our efforts over the past 24 years, the North Korean nuclear program is more advanced and more dangerous than ever. They now fire missiles over Japanese airspace. They now have ICBM capabilities. They now claim to have tested a hydrogen bomb. And just this morning, there are reports that the regime is preparing for yet another ICBM launch. To the members of the Security Council, I must say, enough is enough. We have taken an incremental approach, and despite the best of intentions, it has not worked. Members of this Council will no doubt urge negotiations and a return to talks. But as I have just outlined, we have engaged in numerous direct and multilateral talks with the North Korean regime, and time after time, they have not worked. The time for half measures in the Security Council is over. The time has come to exhaust all of our diplomatic means before it's too late. We must now adopt the strongest possible measures. Kim Jong-un's action cannot be seen as defensive. 
he wants to be acknowledged as a nuclear power. But being a nuclear power is not about using those terrible weapons to threaten others. Nuclear powers understand their responsibilities. Kim Jong-un shows no such understanding. His abusive use of missiles and his nuclear threats show that he is begging for war. War is never something the United States wants. We don't want it now. But our country's patience is not unlimited. We will defend our allies and our territory. The idea that some have suggested a so-called freeze for freeze is insulting. When a rogue regime has a nuclear weapon and an ICBM pointed at you, you do not take steps to lower your guard. No one would do that. We certainly won't. The time has come to exhaust all diplomatic means to end this crisis. And that means quickly enacting the strongest possible measures here in the UN Security Council. Only the strongest sanctions will enable us to resolve this problem through diplomacy. We have kicked the can down the road long enough. There is no more road left. This crisis goes well beyond the UN. The United States will look at every country that does business with North Korea as a country and the United States will look at every country that does business with North Korea as a country that is giving aid to their reckless and dangerous nuclear intentions. And what we do on North Korea will have a real impact on how other outlaw nations who seek nuclear weapons choose to conduct themselves in the future. The stakes could not be higher. The urgency is now. 24 years of half measures and failed talks is enough. Thank you. I thank the representative of the United States for her statement. I give the floor to the representative of Japan. Thank you, Mr. President. We appreciate the presidency's swift convening of this urgent briefing, jointly requested by the United States, Republic of Korea, France, UK, and Japan. We also appreciate the briefing by Mr. Fulton. Less than a week ago, the Security Council gathered to condemn the launch of the ballistic missile by North Korea, which flew over Japan. Yesterday, North Korea announced it had succeeded in miniaturizing the nuclear warhead to be attached to an ICBM. Only hours later, North Korea conducted the sixth nuclear test. Seen together, it is clear how belligerent and dangerous North Korean action are and how it is not a problem just for North Korean's neighbors, but for the entire international community. The Security Council must not waste any time in putting an end to such an outrageous and unacceptable challenge to the security and safety of the world. Regarding the nuclear testing, North Korea is the only one to have conducted nuclear tests in the 21st century. Almost exa one, exactly one year ago, North Korea conducted the first nuclear test and the council members were united in expressing condemnation in the strongest terms. The international community urged North Korea to stop but North Korea poured precious resources to enhance nuclear capabilities. As a result, the sixth nuclear test exhibited a magnitude of explosion far greater than the previous one and has raised the threat to an unprecedented level. Regarding missile launches, the Security Council has adopted stern presidential statement less than a week ago. I will not repeat the discussion, but let me just remind you that missile launches and nuclear tests are part and parcel of North Korea's nuclear development. Taken together, the threat it poses has entered truly a new level, more grave and imminent. This nuclear test by North Korea is a clear violation of the Security Council resolutions and is a brazen challenge to the international disarmament and non-proliferation regime centered on the treaty 
on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons, NPT. It also violates Japan DPRK Pyongyang Declaration, as well as the joint statement of the Six Party Talks. Japan strongly condemns North Korea and has directly lodged a protest against North Korea. Japan welcomes the fact that many countries in the world, including members of the Council, as well as the Secretary General, Guterres, they have already issued statements strongly condemning North Korea. But beyond condemnation, the Security Council must act to stop North Korea from continuing down this road. We should make it clear to the North Koreans that continuation of the current policy will bring about serious consequences. We must put maximum pressure on North Korea to change its policy. It continues to be critically important for all the member states to faithfully implement the existing resolutions that have been unanimously adopted, including 2270, 2321, 2356, and 2371. But that is not sufficient. Japan stresses the need for the Council to adopt swiftly a new resolution with further robust sanction measures. In paragraph 29 of Resolution 2371, the Security Council expressed its, and I quote, determination to take further significant measures in the event of a further DPRK launch or nuclear test, end of quote. The Council must act on this determination accordingly. Japan is looking forward to continuing to work closely with all the members of the Council on this ever more urgent and grave threat to the peace and security of the world. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Japan for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of France. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, at the outset, I would like to thank Egypt for its excellent presidency of the Security Council last month. And I congratulate Ethiopia through you, sir, upon its accession to the presidency of the Council this month. You can certainly count upon France's full support this upcoming month, which is set to be particularly busy. I thank you for having convened this emergency meeting at our joint request together with the United States, the United Kingdom, the Republic of Korea, and Japan. I also thank Jeff Feldman for his highly elucidating presentation. Sir, yesterday, North Korea traversed a major threshold in escalation following two intercontinental ballistic missile launches and the open endangerment of a country in the region, last night it undertook a sixth nuclear test. This occurrence was immediately detected by the international monitoring system of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty Organization. My country, through our senior most officials, most vehemently condemned this incident beyond the expression of solidarity, which on behalf of France I especially address to countries in the region. It is particularly through the entire to the inter international community as a whole that I call for there to be a clear-headed, resolute approach with a full grasp of the gravity of the situation. Clearly, each of us today is concerned by this, for each of us is threatened. Sir, let us be frank. In uh, the course of a few months, the threat has changed both in dimension and nature. The threat is no longer merely regional. It is now a global threat. It is no longer a virtual threat. It is now an imminent threat. It is no longer a, merely a serious threat. It is now an existential threat. 
This grave global threat undermines our security, it undermines strategic stability, and undermines international peace. Through this sixth nuclear test, the Pyongyang regime persists in violating its obligations and in defying us. Each North Korean action reflects a reckless, ongoing, methodical effort on the part of the regime to, as soon as possible, deliver on its dangerous obsession. I am referring to the possession of an operational nuclear arsenal, which is designed to shift not only regional but also global balances. The combination of nuclear capacity to which I referred and, and North Korean intercontinental ballistic missiles now constitute a ubiquitous danger. Mr. President, in this context, weakness or vacillating is not an option. For this reason, France calls for a, an expeditious, resolute, united response by the Security Council, underpinned by three components or three elements, the prompt adoption of new sanctions against the North Korean regime. The stringent implementation of existing sanctions by all stakeholders. And lastly, the adoption of additional measures by the European Union. Time is ticking. Let us be aware of this. We know that Pyongyang will, has not hesitated, will not hesitate even at the cost of the lives of its people to breach the most basic rules which we have set forth in terms of non-proliferation and beyond. This is a major and avowed undermining of all foundations of our system of laws and security. We cannot countenance this. Collectively, we share responsibility to uphold this, to safeguard this, and to reinforce this. Our credibility is at stake. To those who believe that the willingness of dialogue on the part of the international community is lacking, unfortunately, the present-day situation is far from providing conditions for negotiations. My country has always defended dialogue. However, it is evident that North Korea hasn't given us the slightest signal, not the slightest pledge of a possible willingness to negotiate on its nuclear and ballistic missiles. Given the Attempt for international law and the authority of the Council, we mustn't compromise. We stated this and we'll repeat this. A violation of our own decisions cannot be subject to bargaining. We cannot allow our reactions to be dictated. North Korea must relinquish its nuclear and ballistic program irreversibly, completely and verifiably. It must, without delay, comply with its international obligations. And it must also, and this is France's convic conviction, must join the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Only a resolute firm response can deliver effects in prompting North Korea to, to, to return to the negotiating table with our conditions. We must continue to implement existing sanctions fully and conscientiously. These are not an end in itself, but they are effective. Let's recall that economic major economic sanctions were only adopted by the Council in 2016. So they are continuing to, to be stepped up. In the light of these recent developments, we must further step up. We must maximize pressure being brought to bear on the Pyongyang regime. France and supports the prompt adoption of new sanctions by this council, particularly in the economic realm and other sectors. We are firmly committed to similar initiatives at the European Union, as I mentioned. Sir, in the alarm alarming spiral of brinkmanship and provocations in which it has un which has undertaken North Korea must assume the consequences of its obstinacy the sole response that we presently can put forward is strict unambiguous policy based upon the goals of a complete dismantling of the North Korean program only on the basis of this position of utmost resolute resolute and maximum pressure being brought to bear on the regime. regime. Only this way can we change its calculations to prompt the North Korean regime to return to the negotiation table without preconditions, and that is the only way we can pave the way to a political settlement to the crisis.
Mr. President, in the light of this heightened, extremely grave threat, the Council must rise to the responsibility it has assumed. And you may rest assured that France is committed to this as a permanent member of the Security Council. Thank you. I thank the representative of France for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, Mr. President. This is the sixth time that the Security Council has come together to condemn a nuclear test by North Korea. The sixth time that the world has held its breath. North Korea is the only country in the 21st century to have conducted such tests against all international standards of behavior. In addition, we have met many times in recent months following other North Korean provocations. Most recently, just last week, in response to its reckless missile test over Japan. Yesterday's nuclear test explosion was by far the largest yet. Combined with the increasing range of its missiles, North Korea poses a threat not simply to its region, but truly to global peace and security. This latest test has been rightly condemned already by most of the governments represented here today. We have passed eight sanctions resolutions on North Korea. The country is subject to the most stringent sanctions currently applied by this council. And yet still, North Korea continues to put its illegal missile and nuclear programs ahead of international law, international security, and the will of this council. This is a disturbing and unprecedented situation. Rarely has a state remained so defiant in the face of overwhelming international condemnation and repeated powerful rounds of sanctions. It is clear that existing sanctions applied by the Security Council on North Korea are having an effect. In particular, the measures against commodity exports and the financial sector applied since 2016 are making it harder and harder for Pyongyang to acquire the hard currency necessary to fund its program. Each day, that gets harder still, thanks to the efforts of many states around this table. Those who doubt this impact need only read the statements coming from the North Korean regime. They rail against the sanctions that we have placed upon them. But it is also clear that DPRK is uniquely willing to put their illicit programs ahead of the well-being of its people. Those people suffer appalling repression and struggle even to feed themselves. The leadership of North Korea has chosen this path of defiance at great cost. Faced with this unique threat to international peace and security, the Security Council must condemn this test and the entire North Korean nuclear and missile program. We continue to wish for a peaceful way forward. Dialogue will always be our end goal. But returning to dialogue without a serious sign of intent from Pyongyang would be a setup to failure. North Korea must change course to allow a return to dialogue. Were they to do so, the opportunity exists to end this crisis. Until that moment, we must stay the course on sanctions and continue as the Secretary General has called for, to present a united front. I said when we met last week that the United Kingdom believed a new UN Security Council resolution was required in response to North Korea's dangerous and illegal test flight of the missile over Japan. In light of yesterday's nuclear test, our resolve to act has increased still further. We must increase the pace of implementation of existing sanctions and work rapidly towards the adoption of a new and effective resolution. While continuing to enforce the measures this council has already agreed, we should go further by taking steps to sever the funds on which the regime relies 
in order to pursue its illegal and destabilizing programs. And we should not least further restrict the unethical exploitation of North Korean workers overseas. Mr. President, North Korea has created a deeply dangerous and unstable situation. The United Kingdom will work with our partners on this council and beyond to tackle the challenge. I urge all states to join us. Thank you. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of China. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. President, on the 3rd of September, the DPRK, despite the general opposition of the international community, disregarding the relevant resolutions, provisions of the Security Council, conducted once again a nuclear test. The Chinese government resolutely opposes and strongly condemns the nuclear tests of DPRK in violation of the UN Security Council resolutions. Achieving the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and maintaining the nuclear non-proliferation system and peace and stability in Northeast Asia, this is the firm stand of the Chinese government and also the general aspiration of the international community. We strongly urge the DPRK to face up squarely to the firm will of the international community on the issue of the denuclearization of the peninsula and earnestly abide by the resolu uh, relevant resolutions of the Council, stop taking actions that are wrong, deteriorating the situation and not in line with its own interests either and truly return to the track of solving the issue through dialogue. The situation on the peninsula is deteriorating constantly as we speak, falling into a vicious circle. The peninsula issue must be resolved peacefully. China will never allow chaos and war on the peninsula. The parties concerned must strengthen their sense of urgency, take due responsibilities, play their due roles, take practical measures, make joint efforts to, together to ease the situation, restart the dialogue and talks, and prevent further deterioration of the situation on the peninsula. The proposal by China and Russia of, of a two-track approach which promotes the denuclearization of the peninsula and establishment of a peace mechanism in parallel, the suspension for suspension initiative which calls for the DPRK to spend its nuclear and missile activities and for the United States and the Republic of Korea to suspend the large-scale military exercises and the step-by-step -step conception from Russia are the bases on which both countries jointly proposed a roadmap to resolve the peninsula issue. This joint initiative by China and Russia is practical and feasible, aimed at addressing the most urgent security concerns of the parties concerned, easing the tension as soon as possible, preventing the escalation of the situation round after another round, achieving through dialogue the denuclearization of the peninsula and maintaining the peace and stability of the peninsula and the region. We hope that the parties concerned will seriously consider this and actively respond to it. China calls upon the international community to jointly and comprehensively and fully implement the relevant resolutions of the Security Council on DPRK, firmly push forward the goal of denuclearization of the peninsula and firmly maintain the peace and stability of the peninsula. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of China for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of Ukraine. <coughs> Mr. President, I thank Jeffrey Feldman for his briefing on this alarming issue and the United States, Japan and the Republic of Korea for initiating the Council's briefing today. The open format of our meeting is important so that it leaves no doubt in what the North Korean regime will hear from every member of this Security Council. We need to express our attitude to their policies loud and clear. Ukraine is deeply concerned over the conduct of yet another nuclear test by DPRK which represents a threat to international peace and security and constitute a fragrant breach of the non-proliferation regime, including universal norms prohibiting nuclear testing. 
In this regard, I'd like to recall today's statement of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine saying that, and I quote, in conjunction with Pyongyang aggressive ballistic missile program, it now poses a real threat not only to neighboring countries, but also to the entire international community. As the country that voluntarily renounced its third largest nuclear arsenal, along with strategic means of their delivery, Ukraine regards Pyongyang's recent actions as a conscious, reckless, and dangerous provocation. It is most deplorable that the North Korean leadership has once again defied bluntly and cynically numerous United Nations Security Council resolutions. Ukraine calls on Pyongyang to refrain from any demonstration of force, seize all nuclear tests without delay, and restart a constructive dialogue without preconditions in order to ensure a complete, irreversible, and verifiable renunciation of its nuclear and missile programs. Ukraine stand, stands ready to join other members of the international community, including as a current non-permanent member of the UN Security Council, in taking stronger and more decisive measures to curb future nuclear and missile threats. In order to strengthen nuclear non-proliferation regime, we call upon the UN Security Council to undertake in-depth investigation into the development of the North Korean nuclear and missile programs in order to expose any possible foreign assistance to Pyongyang in this area." End of quote. There are some points that the Ukrainian delegation would like to highlight in this regard. Pyongyang's policies proved to be very persistent and clear in ignoring international law and numerous calls to halt its illegal activity that leaves no hope for DPRK compliance with the existing norms and prohibitions. <coughs> Moreover, Pyongyang's aggressive rhetoric is aimed at legitimizing such acts through blaming other states for raising the tensions in the region. That is absolutely unacceptable. Needless to say, the Council should use every instrument at its, disposable, sorry, at its disposal to ensure full implementation of its resolutions. At the same time, we cannot but recognize that we urgently need even more robust measures to respond comprehensively and effectively to the growing nuclear threat on the Korean Peninsula. Ukraine remains ready for constructive work with all delegations on this issue to ensure positive changes in the current situation and move closer to denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. I thank you. I thank the representative of Ukraine for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of Italy. I thank you, <clears throat> Mr. President. Mr. President, the latest nuclear test by North Korea represents, in our view, a grave and reckless provocation in violation of successive Security Council resolutions. Our Minister of Foreign Affairs immediately condemned this act in the strongest terms. Since the first hours after the test, Prime Minister Gentiloni has been in close contact with our main European partners and international partners, confirming that Italy will continue to do its part for a firm and cohesive response at the international and at the European Union level to pressure Pyongyang to desist from its continued provocations. As our Foreign Minister Alfano stressed, by pursuing its nuclear and ballistic programs, Pyongyang poses a clear threat to international peace and security and is increasingly and seriously challenging the global non-proliferation regime. North Korea is the only country, as was reminded, that has tested a nuclear device in the 21st century. Such a breach of, breach of the international moratorium on nuclear tests highlights once more the urgent need for the comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty to enter into force. Also, following an initiative by the Italian presidency, the G7 leaders this morning issued a statement urging the full implementation of Security Council resolutions, stating the readiness to adopt further measures to ensure that North Korea reverts to international legality and recalling the primary role of this Council to this end. We express, therefore, our full solidarity to the governments of the region as well as their peoples who are directly affected by the consequences of Pyongyang irresponsible acts while reaffirming that North Korea's nuclear and missile programs are a global threat that concerns us all. 
The DPRK regime continues to systematically defy the authority of this Council and the will of the international community as a whole. This latest nuclear test poses a new level of threat. It is imperative that the DPRK immediately put a complete stop to the development of its missile and nuclear programs in a verifiable and irreversible manner. Mr. President, underlining the importance that Italy attaches to the continued unity of the Security Council on this matter, we believe that under the current circumstances, a firm and determined response by this Council is the right course of action. Therefore, we encourage the Security Council to adopt further measures in response to the latest nuclear test, and we will conduct our work constructively to this end, bearing in mind that sanctions must, must remain a tool of a wider strategy aimed at a peaceful and long-term solution for the Korean Peninsula and the region as a whole. In this vein, we are committed to ensuring, as we affirm this resolution 2371, that the sanctions regime does not have a negative effect on the humanitarian situation in the country. Finally, as chair of the 1718 Committee, we will continue our efforts to ensure a comprehensive and thorough implementation of the sanction regime by the whole UN membership. We are organizing soon yet another briefing open to the whole membership on the resolution 2371, and I hereby launch an appeal to all member states to attend. An effective sanction regime is and will remain essential to make the DPRK leadership calculate the price of its challenge to the international community and bring depth back to the negotiating table for credible multilateral talks. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Italy for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of Sweden. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Mr. Feldman, for your brief. Mr. President, only days since we last met to discuss DPRK, we once again find ourselves called together to respond to the provocative actions of Pyongyang. Sweden condemns in the strongest possible terms yesterday's nuclear test. It constitutes a clear threat to international peace and security, an unacceptable provocation and a clear breach of the DPRK's international obligations in defiance of numerous Security Council resolutions. The DPRK's dangerous and destabilizing course of action further exacerbates the precarious humanitarian situation. Another example of the regime's determination to pursue its nuclear ambitions with an utter disregard for the well-being of its own people. This latest action further raises the already heightened tensions in the region as a result of the DPRK's actions in recent months. The potential for mistakes, misunderstandings, and miscalculations is high. There is a pressing need for measures to reduce tensions in the region and to consider how this Council can facilitate a comprehensive solution to the situation. We renew our call on the DPRK to abandon the dangerous path it is pursuing, to comply with its international obligations and to take positive steps in line with the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty and the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. Mr. President, the Council must deliver a firm response and remain united in the face of the threat to peace that the DPRK's actions constitute not only to its neighbors and the region, but to global non-proliferation at large. We are ready to explore new sanctions. However, sanctions must be duly implemented to have the desired effect. This is also a matter of credibility for the UN system. All countries have a duty to effectively implement the relevant sanctions in line with relevant Security Council resolutions. Yet, the implementation of the sanctions against the DPRK remains insufficient and highly inconsistent. All UN member states must do their utmost in this regard. The Council should make full use of the tools at its disposal. And in this context, we look forward to the briefing on the 1718 
committee uh, on the 11th of September and discussions of further measures to strengthen the implementation of sanctions in force. Mr. President, at the same time, sanctions alone will not solve the situation on the Korean Peninsula, and there is no military solution to the tense situation. In light of the continuous growth in tensions, there is an urgent need to avoid further escalation and to take steps to prepare for a peaceful, diplomatic and comprehensive solution to the situation. Intensified and creative diplomatic efforts are urgently needed. A regional security mechanism should be a medium-term goal. The pursuit of weapons of mass destruction represents one of the gravest threats to international peace and security. Preventing their development and use is a crucial responsibility of this Council. Sweden stands united with Council members in condemning actions that jeopardize international peace and security. I thank you. I thank the representative of Sweden for her statement. I give the floor to the representative of Bolivia. Thank you very much, President. Bolivia would like to begin by thanking the Under Secretary General for Political Affairs, Mr. Jeffrey Feltman, for the briefing he has provided us with this morning, updating us on the most recent events which have led to the convening of this present emergency meeting of the Security Council. Bolivia condemns in the most robust and unequivocal terms the underground nuclear test carried out by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea on the 3rd of September. 2017. According to media reports, said nuclear test was 10 times more powerful than the test carried out in 2016 and 100 times more powerful than the first nuclear test that took place in 2006. Bolivia, guided by its own pacifist ideology and its opposition to nuclear tests, as well as by a conviction as a proponent of the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons, a concept enshrined in the various international treaties in this area decries the manufacture of nuclear weapons fully commensurate with what is prescribed in the treaty banning nuclear weapons in Latin America and the Caribbean, which is better known as the Tlatelolco Treaty. Thanks to the Tlatelolco Treaty, Latin America and the Caribbean have become the first nuclear weapon free zone in the world. And we call for this example set by Latin America and the Caribbean to be replicated in other regions around the globe. President, we echo the words of Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who stated the following, and here I quote, this act is another serious breach of the international obligations of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and undermines international non-proliferation and disarmament efforts, end of quote. We call upon the DPRK to relinquish its nuclear and ballistic missile program in a complete, verifiable and irreversible way. We further call upon them to comply with Security Council resolutions to the letter. By the same token, Bolivia calls upon all parties involved to refrain from stoking the tensions and escalating the war of words which will only serve to jeopardize international peace and security, and particularly the peace and security of the Korean Peninsula. In particular, we call upon all parties to avoid any act of provocation and any unilateral action, indeed any action taken that falls short of full observance for international law and the principles of the Charter of the United Nations. We call upon cooler heads to prevail among the parties involved and call upon parties to halt the spiral into confrontation and the trading of mutual threats of use of military force, including allusions to a nuclear response, which will only unleash a greater catastrophe. We once again reiterate our support for the Chinese Suspension for Suspension, or Double Restraint Initiative, which will allow for a simultaneous freeze. We also call for a return to the negotiating table and we underscore the importance of compliance with Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter, which establishes that the Security Council is the only body legally mandated to impose measures necessary for the maintenance or restoration of international peace and security. This must shape our response and we must forbear from taking unilateral action. On this note, Bolivia opposes the implementation of unilateral sanctions, given that said unilateral sanction, 
sanctions not only constitute a serious uh, and flagrant violation of international law, but also undermine efforts and the work of multilateral organizations such as our own, given that unilateral sanctions by the very nature represent the imposition of the domestic legislation and jurisdiction of one state on the other, and thus erode the principles of uh, territorial integrity, equality, and sovereignty of states. We do make the point that sanctions are not an end in and of themselves, although they're a useful tool, but we also underscore the point that there can be no military solution to this situation on the Korean Peninsula. We thus recall to the parties involved their duty to comply with the provisions of paragraph 5 of resolution uh, 7186 of the General Assembly, which calls for a resumption of the six-party talks, and to tailor their response to paragraph 27 of resolution 2371 of the Security Council, which further calls for the resumption of the six-party talks with the objective of achieving a genuine and verifiable denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula in a peaceful way. To conclude, Bolivia repeats its appeal to all stakeholders to rule out a military alternative and to refrain from the threat of the use of force. We call upon all parties rather to return to dialogue to achieve a peaceful diplomatic and political solution which will presage the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, which we repeat is our overall goal. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Bolivia for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President, we extend our gratitude to Mr. Jeffrey Feldman for the briefing on the latest North Korean nuclear test. The provocative nuclear missile activity by Pyongyang has recently gained dangerous momentum. We are deeply troubled by the testing of, as was announced by Pyongyang officials, the testing of a thermonuclear explosive device for an intercontinental ballistic missile. There is no doubt that presently we are experiencing one of the gravest and most dramatic stages of developments on the Korean Peninsula. It is no exaggeration to state that peace in the region is in serious jeopardy and the threat of this conflict morphing into a hot stage looms larger than ever before. The latest blatant display of disregard by North Korea of the relevant Security Council resolutions and the norms of international law warrants the most vehement, vehement condemnation. We cannot but regret the fact that the DPRK leadership, through its action to undermine the global non-proliferation regime, is posing a grave threat to peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula and at the global level. Pursuit of such a policy is fraught with serious repercussions for the DPRK itself. At the same time, it is evident to us that military solutions cannot settle the issues plaguing the North Korean Peninsula. Given the unfolding situation, there is an urgent need to maintain a cool head, to refrain from any action that can further escalate tensions. We reaffirm the need for a comprehensive and full compliance by all stakeholders with the relevant Security Council statements and resolutions, including the recent Resolution 2371 adopted by consensus. Many today delved into the history of attempts to halt the DPRK nuclear and ballistic program. This excursus into history only serves as evidence of the fact that we failed to resolve this issue through Security Council resolutions, which were only geared towards leveraging sanctions mechanisms. We call upon all stakeholders to immediately return to dialogue and negotiations as that is the sole way to comprehensively settle the issues besetting the, the Korean Peninsula, including nuclear issues. We reaffirm our willingness to engage in concerted efforts along these lines, including the context of implementation of the Russo-Chinese roadmap.
Mr. President, the Russian Federation calls for the international community not to yield to emotions, to act in a calm and balanced way. Once again, we stress that a comprehensive settlement to the nuclear and other issues plaguing the Korean Peninsula can be arrived at solely through political diplomatic channels, including by leveraging the mediation efforts of the United Nations Secretary General. Thank you. I thank the, rep the representative of the Russian Federation for his statement. I, I give the floor to the representative of Uruguay. Thank you very much, President. Given the seriousness of the situation, I will move swiftly to the substantive part of my remarks, but I would nonetheless like to preface said remarks by congratulating you upon the assumption of the presidency of the Security Council and by congratulating Egypt on their excellent exercise of that role throughout August. I would like to thank Japan, uh, France, the European Union, the Republic of Korea for having worked to convene the session, to thank Ethiopia for having agreed to that request, and I would like to thank U.S. Chief of Political Affairs, Mr. Jeffrey Feltman, for his briefing. And I would like to assure him that we stand fully behind every word of that briefing. We fully share his views. President, Uruguay would like to express its satisfaction that an issue of this nature, of this seriousness, is being dealt with in an open session of the Security Council. We believe that this will make a major contribution to fostering transparency in the work of the Security Council and thus go a long way to streamlining the way in which we function as a body. Uruguay would like to condemn in the strongest possible terms the detonation of a nuclear weapon that was carried out yesterday by North Korea. This is the sixth such test carried out by that country since 2006. President, but the paradox is that the, con the world is moving in a different direction when it comes to weapons of mass destruction, or WMDs, and when it comes to denuclearization. And North Korea is treading a lonely path all by itself. No one else carries out tests of this nature, only North Korea, in a flagrant violation of Security Council resolutions. It is showing thus clear determination to uh, engage in confrontation, and it seems to shrug its shoulders at the potential dangerous aftermath of such tests on its own territory, on its own people, and the fact that this could seriously harm and damage its neighboring countries. This seems not to bother them one jot. Last week, we, managed, we marked the International Day Against Nuclear Tests, and my delegation spoke there to call upon the international community to properly and swiftly implement the Non-Proliferation Treaty and to move towards the nuclearization of the universalization of the NPT. This must be stepped up as an action, given the clear threat that nuclear weapons pose to the international community. We condemn the obstinate behavior of the the DPRK, and as has been made clear uh, on various occasions in this chamber, and as we ourselves have just pointed out once again, they are the only country carrying out nuclear tests in the 21st century. Such tests and such actions are a serious threat to international peace and security and are a flagrant violation of Security Council resolutions. Said nuclear tests and the launches of intercontinental ballistic missiles are part of a series of ongoing provocation and thumbing of the nose by the DPRK to the international community and lead to further destabilization in the Korean Peninsula and heightened tensions in the broader region. Against this backdrop, Uruguay calls once again upon North Korea to abandon its nuclear program in a complete, verifiable and irreversible way and thus put an immediate end to all related actions, including launches of intercontinental ballistic missiles and other provocative actions. In a similar vein, we call upon this country to sign up to the NPT and to the safeguards regime of the IAEA and to submit to that those safeguards and to immediately uh, comply with the resolutions of the Security Council. We need, President, to continue to take immediate actions to respond to the DPRK's actions, of course always falling well within the letter of the United Nations Charter and of International Law. Our delegation stands willing to consider the adoption of new and more robust sanctions by this body, by the Security Council. President, as was indicated by speakers previous to me, we need 
to ensure that we effectively implement sanctions, both existing sanctions and any we intend to adopt in the future. And they need to be implemented by all member states of the United Nations. And we need to implement sanctions, making sure that they do not have any adverse impact on the people of North Korea themselves. President, as far as Uruguay is concerned, the end to this delicate and fraught situation is only to be found in diplomacy, in the framework of an international approach that, in, uh, that enjoys the full buy-in of all countries, particularly those countries with influence on the Korean Peninsula. As part of this process, it is essential that the Security Council speak with one voice and that we act with unity in the quest for a peaceful, diplomatic and political solution that will bring about the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Thank you very much, President. I thank the representative of Uruguay for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of Kazakhstan. Mr. President, uh, we would like to commend the delegation of Egypt for very able presidency last month and congratulate our Ethiopian colleagues for taking up the proceedings of the Security Council. We thank uh, the Ethiopian presidency for prompt convening of this meeting of the Security Council. I also thank uh, USG Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Feldman for his report, as well as the delegations of US, UK, France, Japan, and the Republic of Korea for calling these consultations on this most flagrant violation by DPRK. It is absolutely unacceptable for the international community to see the detonation of the th six nuclear tests in the 21st century. Such actions undermine the collective efforts of the international community in establishing a nuclear weapons-free world. It is, an, it is even more frustrating to receive this news just as we have celebrated the International Day against nuclear tests. It should be noted that UNGA resolution establishing the International Day against nuclear tests was unanimously adopted by all member states, including DPRK. The world once again calls on the North Korean regime to abandon its nuclear ambitions and return to the negotiating table. At the recent special meeting of the UN General Assembly, all the participating member states were unanimous in condemning the nuclear threats caused by the provocative actions of Pyongyang. We believe that in light of today's tensions, we have to keep tirelessly seeking mutually acceptable solutions with a view to achieving concrete agreements, both bilateral and multilateral, on freezing DPRK nuclear program and to initiate stage-by-stage -stage denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. At all costs, we must not slide into fueling of the conflict, the consequence of which will be most hazardous not only for North Korea itself, but for the regional and international security. A military approach has never led to any sustainable and lasting solution of the problem. Kazakhstan is the, of the firm conviction that nuclear weapons are not a true guarantor of national security. The global nuclear powers and the world community have demonstrated that ensuring one's own defense through the possession of WMD is not a viable strategy. As a country that has survived the horrors and tragedy of the consequences of nuclear testing, we firmly believe that nothing can justify the conduct of such inhuman acts. We stand in solidarity with the countries of the region and the entire world to find a comprehensive and collective solution to the situation. A new bold diplomatic and political action is necessary to avert the dangerous trend of development on the Korean Peninsula, combined with smart and robust sanctions. We call on all member states to join in the effort. We strongly call on Pyongyang to change its course and think about a prosperous and non-nuclear future for itself and the region. We hope that the DPRK and others can learn from the very clear and undisputed example of Kazakhstan, which not only renounced its nuclear weapons, but together with its Central Asian neighbors, created a nuclear weapon-free zone. Once again, we call on the DPRK to heed the message of the humanity and seek the path of prudence and dialogue. I thank you. I thank the representative of Kazakhstan for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of Egypt. I said the Rais.
Mr. President, Egypt vehemently condemns the nuclear test that was conducted by the DPRK early yesterday, 3 September. And through our commitment, our ongoing commitment of the importance to safeguard the credibility of the nuclear non-proliferation regime, we stand by this. And there's a need to uphold the credibility of the Security Council itself. We reject any double standards in this regard, and we are committed to setting an example in dealing conscientiously and strictly with any threat posed to, uh, to the nuclear non-proliferation regime, regardless of any of the justifications that may be put forward. Egypt fully grasps the nature of the threats being put forward by the North by North Korea and its violations of Security Council and the threats which this poses to international and regional peace and security. And the, the threat this poses to the security in Northeast Asia. Egypt calls upon North Korea to immediately cease all violations and all measures which are in breach of Security Council resolutions. And calls for refraining from any action that might further escalate tensions and which might jeopardize stability and security internationally and regionally, Egypt reaffirms its condemnation of all such violations and its support for the Security Council's assuming its responsibility in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, Egypt once again reiterates its call upon all stakeholders to seek to identify a peaceful settlement to the issues plaguing the North Korean Peninsula, a solution to eliminate all nuclear weapons and to establish a lasting peace between the two Koreas and to demonstrate restraint in line with provisions of Security Council resolutions to safeguard peace, stability, and international security in order to break this vicious cycle, this very dangerous vicious cycle of ongoing violations by the DPRK of Security Council resolutions. In this context, Egypt once again welcomes any initiative or any constructive idea that can lead to a denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and that can lead to a lasting peace in that region. Mr. President, I would like to conclude by once again voicing our great interest in safeguarding Security Council unity in dealing with this matter which is of concern to us all and to ensure that there be international unity. This is a sine qua non to attain the goals of the various measures adopted by the Security Council. Thank you. I thank the representative of Egypt for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of Senegal. Mr. President. President, I would like to begin by thanking the British, French, US and Japanese delegations for having called for the convening of this emergency meeting of the Security Council. And may I also take this opportunity to thank you for having responded so swiftly in convening this meeting. Similar thanks go to US Chief for Political Affairs, Mr. Jeffrey Feltman, for his very clear, factual and comprehensive briefing. Once again, we find ourselves brought together following the latest in a long line of acts of defiance against the international community, defiance particularly of the Security Council carried out by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea or the DPRK. This time, the nuclear test carried out yesterday, Sunday, by the regime of the DPRK, who state themselves publicly that they successfully tested a thermonuclear nuclear hydrogen bomb. 
with an unprecedented power and one which could be installed upon their newly manufactured intercontinental ballistic missiles. This is uh, follows on from the intercontinental ballistic missile launch carried out just last week, which was itself following hard on the heels of previous nuclear tests by the regime. Senegal, standing shoulder to shoulder with the international community, condemns in the strongest possible terms these provocative actions by the DPRK, which are a serious infringement of their international obligations and which pose a threat to international efforts to bring about non-proliferation and disarmament. It leads to heightened tensions, strategic tensions in the Korean Peninsula, but not just within the backyard of the Korean Peninsula, but further beyond that as well. Once again, the credibility of the Security Council is put to the test. Despite all our resolutions and all the sanctions and measures taken against North Korea, the authorities of that country, far from having relinquished their nuclear military ambitions, are now jeopardizing the authority of the Security Council uh, by, the, by their illegal nuclear military actions and their program. And we are led now to having to decide what we can do in response to this brinkmanship in order to ensure that North Korea is made to uh, abide by its international obligations and to proceed to denuclearization in a clear, credible, credible and verifiable way. First and foremost, in terms of what we can do, we must speak with one voice in condemning these actions and in coming up with new ways in order to implement our previous resolutions including Resolution 2371, and endowing these resolutions with teeth. The members of the United Nations, not just the Security Council, must also implement the provisions of Security Council resolutions, however complicated that may be, including these resolutions enacting sanctions against North Korea. It is in taking such actions and on the basis of the information from the regular briefings that we hear both within this chamber and also within the 1718 Sanctions Committee, and we thank Italy for the upcoming briefing it will organize on the September 11th in the framework of the 1718 Sanctions Committee on the effectiveness of the sanctions work. We remain convinced that there can be no military solution to this crisis. We call upon the careers of the, the authorities of the DPRK to respect to the letter the resolution of the Security Council and put an immediate end to the illegal nuclear military program to refrain from pursuing the development of weapons of mass destruction and from threatening to use these against member states of the United Nations. And we call upon them further to return to the negotiating table within part of this, within the framework of the six party talks, which they themselves decided to step away from a few years ago. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Senegal for his statement. I shall now make a statement in my capacity as a representative of Ethiopia. We believe the situation surrounding the DPRK is becoming progressively complex and increasingly fraught with incalculable danger, not only for the Korean Peninsula, but for the global peace and security as a whole. The latest nuclear test by the DPRK is indeed a dangerous escalation with potentially catastrophic consequences, and we join all Council members in condemning it in the strongest possible terms. This latest provocation by the DPRK came only a few days after we adopted a PRST calling it to abandon all nuclear weapons and immediately seize all related activities Always, as well as underscoring the need for a peaceful, diplomatic, and political solution to the situation. There were indeed overtures in that direction, but they were not seized. No doubt, the recent nuclear test by the DPRK clearly indicated that we might be on the edge of the cliff. We agree with all council members that we are in a very dangerous phase of this problem. We believe this council should use all means at its disposal to bring the DPRK back to the negotiating table 
and we are open to proposals that could be considered in this regard. We hope we'll be able to take appropriate action to bring pressure to bear on the DPRK while maintaining the unity of the Council on this very delicate issue, which has far-reaching implications for peace and security in the Korean Peninsula and beyond. We attach extremely great importance to the unity of the Council on this matter. I now resume, uh, I'm sorry. There are no more uh, names inscribed on the list of speakers. I now give the floor to the representatives of the Republic of Korea. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> At the outset, I would like to thank you for convening this emergency meeting of the Security Council on North Korea's sixth nuclear test that was conducted this past Saturday. I'm also grateful to be invited to take part in this important discussion. Mr. President, it is with a deep sense of disappointment, frustration, and even anger that I address this council today. One year ago, when North Korea conducted its fifth nuclear test, the Security Council issued the stern warning that North Korea's continued nuclear and missile provocation would not be tolerated. Despite this warning, however, North Korea has since fired 20 ballistic missiles over 15 times in flagrant violation of multiple Security Council resolutions. While spending considerable amounts of time and energy responding to such reckless ballistic missile provocations by North Korea, we held on to one last ray of hope that North Korea may at least refrain from additional nuclear tests. Regrettably, yet again, the country has chosen a dangerous path in defiance of the stern warning of the international community. The nuclear test conducted by North Korea two days ago has proven to be its most powerful thus far. Following the two ballistic missile launches of intercontinental range in July, which led to the adoption of Security Council Resolution 2371 on the 5th of August, North Korea has been maximizing the level of threat and now claims that the purpose of the most recent test is to develop nuclear warheads to install on top of its intercontinental ballistic missiles. North Korea's such do-or-die behavior has invited a very harsh and scathing reaction from the international community. Indeed, over the past two days, numerous states from around the world have spoken in one uni unified voice by issuing statements strongly condemning North Korea's nuclear test. Even those countries that have been trying to be as sympathetic as possible vis-a-vis -vis North Korea's security concerns have added their own voice to such condemnations without exceptions this time around. This is clear evidence that North Korea's recent nuclear test is an immense challenge that threatens the peace and security not only on the Korean Peninsula or in Northeast Asia, but of the entire world. Therefore, the Security Council must respond to this serious provocation with the adoption of a new resolution containing much tougher measures corresponding to the magnitude and gravity of the test. Now is the time to take measures that are strong and robust enough to compel North Korea to seriously engage in dialogue. The new resolution must include not only additional measures to further block funds that could possibly flow into North Korea's illegal WMD program, but also truly biting and robust measures that Pyongyang finds very painful. Mr. President, just five days ago, we celebrated the International Day Against Nuclear Tests in an informal meeting of the General Assembly. A number of member states gathered to commemorate this special day together and engaged in a very serious discussion. Virtually all the particip participating member states that took the floor at the meeting strongly condemned North Korea, the only country that has conducted nuclear tests in the 21st century, and called on the country to immediately halt further nuclear tests. But it was just a couple of days later that North Korea conducted yet another nuclear test. Today, a voluntary moratorium on nuclear tests has become a de facto international norm. Regrettably, however, 
the world is yet to be free from nuclear tests due to a single country that continues to stubbornly pursue a retrogressive and destabilizing path. North Korea's delusional aspiration of becoming a nuclear weapon state is the sole reason for the existence of the International Day against nuclear tests. We must end this immediately, and I call upon all member states, including the members of this council, to take firm and decisive actions to this end. I also call upon North Korea to stop pursuing the path of self-destruction and make a strategic decision without further delay to choose the path of denuclearization, the only option and right way to ensure its survival. Whether to stick to its current path of self-destruction or redirect itself towards the path of survival is entirely the choice of North Korea. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of the Republic of Korea for his statement. The representative of the United States has asked for the floor to make a further statement. Mr. President, due to the urgency of the situation with the nuclear test as well as the announcement by North Korea ICBM test, we want to urge the Council to move very quickly on this. I think that North Korea basically has slapped everyone in the face in the international community that has asked them to stop. So the United States will be circulating a uh, resolution that we want to negotiate this week and vote on on Monday. So just wanted to let the members know. I know that some are going to add us, but we wanted to make sure that we um, will do that on Monday when we can get that um, get those negotiations finished. Thank you. I thank the, rep the representative of the United States for her statement. There are uh, no more names inscribed on the list of speakers. The meeting is adjourned. And we have a follow-up from the New York Times today. The Times saying one day after its latest nuclear test, North Korea appears to be making preparations to launch a ballistic missile, a South Korean official said today. South Korea's military has observed the preparations for a North Korean intercontinental ballistic missile test, Chang Kung Su, a South Korean defense ministry official told lawmakers. The South Korean military carried out drills today in response to the test with F-15K fighter jets and ground forces firing missiles in a simulated attack on the North's nuclear site. They've also asked the United States to deploy strategic assets, uh, which include an aircraft carrier group and bombers, that according to the South Korean news agency and reported by the New York Times.